It is now my absolute pleasure to introduce to you Habitat for Humanity's President and CEO, Steve Massanetti. Steve began his service with Habitat as a volunteer in 1990. He then spent 11 years working at Habitat for Humanity International Headquarters in Georgia. For the past 14 years, Steve has been leading the local Habitat team, which has provided another beautiful number to share, more than 1,500 Portland and Gresham residents with the opportunity for affordable home ownership. This success has not gone unnoticed as the Portland Business Journal selected Habitat as one of the most admired nonprofits in 2017. Earth Advantage selected them as the low income green builder of the year and the parent organization Habitat for Humanity International selected them as an affiliate of distinction for the last four years. Steve has become a prominent voice for affordable housing at the local, state, and national level, and he also serves on the U.S. Council for Habitat International. Let's welcome Steve to the stage. <laughs> Thank you, Natalie. <laughs> This is America's opportunity to help bridge the gulf between the haves and the have-nots. And the question is whether America will do it. There's nothing new about poverty. What is new is that we now have the techniques and the resources to get rid of poverty. And the real question is whether we have the will Fifty years ago, our nation mourned the tragic death of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. And then just a few days later, Congress passed the Fair Housing Act. Now, the Fair Housing Act outlawed housing discrimination and residential segregation. You see, it was meant to ensure that no matter who we are or where we come from or the color of our skin, we should have access to good neighborhoods of opportunity where our kids can go to good schools and where their parents can get jobs that pay enough to support their families. Dr. King called this the beloved community, a world where poverty and hunger and homelessness would not be tolerated. So folks, I wonder, I wonder what Dr. King would think of our housing situation in Portland today. Have we made any progress in 50 years? Let's take a look. Now we know that, we know that white families in Portland own homes at about twice the rate of their black, Latino, Native American counterparts. And we know that this is because whites have had opportunities to buy homes, even government subsidies. While people of color have faced barrier after barrier, racist lending practices, redlining. Folks, did you know they actually drew red lines around maps of Northeast Portland that kept folks from getting home loans? Now, I know there's lots of realtors and lenders and landlords in the room this morning who are, who are doing everything right and following the Housing Act, and we need you. Thank you for being here. But these practices continue. Yes, thank you. They continue sometimes intentionally, but often unintentionally. Now here's the uncomfortable truth for me. Those of us who own homes, as housing prices go up in our neighborhoods, we celebrate, right? We benefit. But for those who don't, as housing prices go up, so do their rents. And they get pushed out of their neighborhoods. Folks, I'm concerned we're moving further and further away from building this beloved community. Now, have we made any progress in 50 years? I think we've made some, right? In fact, Habitat for Humanity alone has provided almost 10,000 Oregonians, yes, Oregonians, with a decent, affordable place to call home. That's something, right? Thank you. And this year, to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the assassination of Dr. King, 
His youngest daughter, Dr. Bernice King, has invited Habitat to partner with the King Center because she says that with every new Habitat for Humanity home that we build, we move one step closer to her father's vision of building the beloved community. And here's why. When you have access to an affordable mortgage, you no longer have to worry about the rent going up. And you don't have to worry about whether, whether your kids will have to change schools again and again, or if you have enough money to take your daughter to the doctor the next time she gets sick. Homeownership, homeownership can launch a family out of poverty and transform lives for generations. Let me tell you about Deasha. Here she is with her mom. Now most mornings, Deasha lies in bed until she hears on her wall. And she smiles and she jumps out of bed and runs across her room and she knocks her secret code back. You see, this is how Deasha and her best friend Shaylee say good morning to each other. They've done this for years, ever since they moved into their Habitat home, homes that share a wall. Here they are. <laughs> now, it wasn't always like this. Deasha used to live with her grandmother and her mom and her aunt and uncle and her other uncle. There were actually 10 of them in that house that meant sharing beds and sleeping on the floor. Even though her mom worked, she had a good job at the post office, but didn't make enough to pay rent in Portland. Until one day, her grandmother told her mom about Habitat for Humanity. And she applied and got accepted, and she did her sweat equity helping her build her home in Northeast Portland. And Deasha spent most of her life in that home. She and Shaylee used to ride bikes together. They walked to Vernon Elementary School together. They actually both went to Benson High School, which is just a few blocks from here, and graduated. Deisha is now 21 years old. Here she is today. She's got a great job at Oregon or at OHSU. And she goes to Warner Pacific University and is studying to become a psychologist. And Shaylee, she's a school teacher. That's what I think Dr. King meant when he talked about building the beloved community. Thank you. <laughs> so at Habitat, we keep building. Right now, we're finishing up a 21-home subdivision in Northeast Portland's Cully neighborhood. Here's a few of those homes. Just yesterday, I drove by our next site, and we're putting it, we, we broke ground on 15 more homes just a couple blocks from there. We also have 10 homes under construction right now in Southeast Portland's Jade District. Here's some of those, and those will be finishing up later this year. <laughs> Thank you. That is 250 more moms and dads and kids who will re reap the benefits of home ownership. That's building the beloved community. But we know the need is great. The gap continues to widen. And that's why at Habitat, we have set the goal to triple the number of families we serve each year. And to do this, we've come up with a whole new business model, one in which we partner in new and innovative ways with other nonprofit organizations, with banks, public sector, private sector. And with this new model, if we can raise 30% more money, we can serve 300% more families. For example, this year we're gonna be building 42 homes in North Portland for families that have been displaced from historically African-American neighborhoods. But to do this, we're partnering with the African-American Alliance for Home Ownership, Proud Ground, the City of Portland, First Republic Bank, and, and, and you, <laughs> we need you. Folks, Dr. King, he challenged us to build the beloved community, right? But he also reminded us that we have the techniques to end poverty, and we have the resources. 
All that we need is the will. So I think the question really becomes, do we have the will? I think we do. If you agree, join us. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs>